Hey everybody, what is going on? So today's video is going to be about insulation. Insulating a van, how to insulate it, what products I use, what products I recommend, what products I don't recommend. That's all going to be in this video. Let's get started. All right, if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing. Well, what I do here is I talk a lot of van life stuff. However, I will also be incorporating a lot of tiny living overlanding schooly life pretty much anything that has to do with uh, sustainable living or on the road or travel adventure and i'll be mixing in some stand-up comedy vlogs as time progresses i feel that a lot of those uh like families the van life the schoolies the tiny homes uh or anything of that nature we can all be in one big family we can all be under one umbrella we don't have to work against each other and that is what my channel is all about well, you may be asking yourself right about now that I am recording this in a living room. I'm not even in a van. Okay, well, I have built and designed two vans myself. I did a lower budget van and I did a very high end budget van. Both were DIY or DIY assist, as in I got people to help me in certain aspects of the build. Then I went out and built a Jeep Gladiator. Actually, I didn't build a Jeep Gladiator whatsoever. Who would ever do that? But I built the back slides into an overlanding rig with a rooftop tent. I did that one all myself, wanted to prove all the haters <laughs> that I could do something myself. Anyways, what today is about is insulation. Now I have a lot of friends in the industry. I have seen uh, hundreds of van builds. I have also been part of maybe two dozen van builds. I have been behind the scenes with builders start doing more of these vlogs. It has been a very long time since I have sat down and really talked to the camera about an informational type vlog. So I'm very excited to get back into that sort of thing. So insulation, I feel, is one of those very overlooked things in regards to building a van. And to be honest with you, I probably messed up both of my vans and I learned so much looking at professional builders. Now, professional builders might be getting upset with me and making a video like this, but I'm going to say to the camera what I've told every single professional builder. Just because I give this information away doesn't mean that their clients are just going to go and do their own build. I can do my own oil changes. That doesn't mean that I'm going to go out and do my own oil changes. I'd rather pay someone to do my oil change, just like building a van. So all you professional builders watching this video, guess what? Your clients will still be there. Don't you worry. This is more for the DIY crowd. Insulating a van and a tiny home or a container home or even just a regular stick and brick house are going to all be different. All right. I'm not going to insulate a van like I would do a container home. A van is made out of sheet metal. Okay. And sheet metal is a conductor. Now, if you really wanted to, you could kind of use like a koozie method by putting like a wrap or exterior type of insulation or protector on the outside of your van. Some people don't have the money to do that, but that's just an option. You have a vinyl wrap or you can have some sort of like spray that the like a Linex or uh, things like that. That will actually help those sun rays not come through so vibrant up against that sheet metal, which will radiate the inside. With that aside, if most people, I didn't do that in my first two vans and I rarely see it in other vans. However, that is just an option for people out there. Going into the interior van, I personally like to use a layered insulation. Now I'm gonna kind of go into what a layered insulation is. And I'm also gonna go into all the different products. The first layer that I would use is called kill mat or a sound deadener. Kill mat and rattle trap are virtually the same thing. They're sound deadeners. They were originally designed to put into like a trunk space if you were to put in like two 12 inch subwoofers and completely just jam out with your friends. The sound deadener actually takes it from the metal from rattling. Now, years ago when I did my first van, I used to use that sound deadener and you only needed to cover 25% of the metal to keep it the vibrations to keep it from vibrating that would help with road noise and driving down the road now what people are using this kill mat or rattle trap for by the way i believe kill mat is a little bit better because it 
not tar based. Rattle trap is actually tar based, which technically is toxic. So you, I personally would rather use a kill mat than rattle trap, but that's just me. And I'm going to go into another sound deadener in a minute. But the reason why people will cover all of the inside metal with that kill mat is because the radiation from the sun hitting that metal and heating up the inside. If you're at a 90 or 100 degree day and that sun is just blaring down on your metal, it's very possible to hit 120 or 130 inside of your van. You were trying to prevent that from happening. If you really want to test this out, there's two ways you could do it. You could take like a piece of kill mat, go out into the blaring hot sun, put it up against the metal, and then have one side of it bare and then use your hands as like almost like a temperature gauge. Or you could use a flare gun and literally point that flare gun or use your hand up against the kill mat and then up against the bare metal in the blaring sun and you will feel that difference. And if you had a flare gun, it'll actually tell you the difference between the temperatures from bare metal to with just kill mat. Cover this thing with an entire uh, kill mat and that is like a reverse koozie. I guess is the best way I could put it. So that insul that's the first layer of insulation, You're covering every single piece of metal. I told you I was gonna talk to you about a different sound deadener. If I had it in my budget, I would use a product called Frost King. Frost King is actually a duct insulation, not a quack quack, more like a D-U-C-T, okay? Duct insulation as in ducting for air conditioning vents, like that kind of stuff, or heating and ventilation. If you go into like a commercial building, you see those like big old piping up there, sometimes they'll wrap it with a insulator. That's what that's what they use, it's like a Frost King. You can actually buy it at really any hardware store. The thing is, it is super expensive to cover all of your metal inside the van. It is a little bit thicker. I think the R value is like a two or three on that, whereas Rattle Trap is like a 0.5. R value, but a Frost King is higher than that. It's thicker and it's literally meant for duct insulation. You're wrapping that stuff around ducting, which is metal. And oh my geez, you're going into, you're taking that Frost King and now wrapping a van with it. Imagine the possibilities, right? The thing is for a 12 inch roll of it, that's 20 feet long, it's like 18 or $20 or something like that. You know, it, so it can add up really quickly. So what I tell some of my clients when I do phone consultations, what I tell them is I would like to use that on the floors and the ceilings. Ceilings, obviously, because that is going to be the most exposed to the sun. So floors and ceilings, and why floors? That's actually not exposed to the sun whatsoever. Floors get really, really, really cold. No matter how you look at it, no matter how you do it, the floors get cold. Now, I'm also talking to you as you don't have a heated floor system. In my second van, I had a radiant floor heating system. We're just going to toss that out right now because we're not talking about heating. We're talking about insulation in this video. So let's just assume that you don't have a radiant floor heating because those are amazing but we're like with actually like hydronic lines and all the good stuff, whatever, that's for a different day. So what I would do is I'd have that Frost King on the floor, the Frost King on the ceilings. If you can afford it, I would do Frost Kings on the walls, but then you could do Kill Mount on the walls. So the next layer of insulation would be one of three products. And I'm gonna go over those three. And then I'm gonna talk about what other people use that I don't particularly agree with. Actually, I'll go into that right now. Spray foam, I don't, not necessarily hate spray foam because if I was building a container home, I would actually use spray foam as an insulator, but I would not use spray foam as an insulator inside of a van. Couple different reasons. Vans, no matter what, are going to breathe. There's these things called weep holes at the bottom of the van that technically is what water is supposed to go down into. They're weep holes and they drains out. The manufacturers of these vans don't actually think that we're going to convert them into homes. So they make these things where water and condensation can go down and they can drain out and they're called weep holes. That spray foam insulation, one, it can warp the metal of your van and rodents are actually attracted to that. I personally don't like to use spray foam. If you have it professionally done, you can possibly get away with it. I know a lot of people that have been successful with spray foam insulation. So before everybody jumps down my throat saying how spray foam was great for them, I believe you, I have also seen some horrific instances with spray foam, good ones and horrific. 
Now, the products that I would use is either wool, and we're talking real wool, not mineral wool, Havelock wool, which is a real sheep wool. They haven't, I don't think they have an alpaca wool, but if alpaca made like a bat insulation, I would use that. But anyways, Havelock wool, 3M Thinsulate, or polyiso foam board which is the rigid foam board. We'll go into wool first. Wool comes in uh, usually bat insulation. You can go onto the Havelock website. I actually have a discount code that all my links are below for everybody. And I did a video tour with Havelock wool. Wow, would you look at that? We actually toured the whole facility. Comes in these beautiful bat insulation. What is a bat? It's like the roll that like, you know, two inches thick. And I believe a two inch is about an R7 value. Some places in your van, you can actually double up on that to make it four inches thick. Now, wool is meant to breathe. You are not meant to like compress the wool. So you want to make sure that wool will breathe because you actually want airflow going through that wool. Also important, wool is meant to absorb moisture. So in, in any type of humidity setting, it is absorbing the moisture and then it releases it. That is what wool is actually designed to do. We talk about it in the video I did with them. That I will also touch upon that the products that I am mentioning are actually mold resistant. So all of these products are mold resistant. Wool, great, just don't compress it. You can stuff it, but don't compress it. Hope that makes sense. 3M Thinsulate, great product. Can't say anything wrong with them. Maybe it's synthetic. So maybe that's the only thing I could say about it, as in it's not natural like a sheep wool would be. That's I, the only, I guess, con to 3M and Thinsulate. Price point, they're about the same, roughly. Again, stuff that. I also wouldn't compress that because it's actually a little bit meant to breathe. I believe the R value is extremely similar to wool. Again, you could double lump on it if you really wanted to as well. Polyiso foam board comes in various sizes from like half inch inch to an inch, inch and a half, two inch. And again, depending on where you're insulating your van, whether it's in the floor or the cavities of the wall or the ceilings, there the depths are going to actually uh, vary throughout the van. So, you know, you can use two inch maybe on the wall cavities and then one inch on the floors, one inch on the ceilings, sort of things like that. Obviously, the R values are going to change with the thickness of the polyiso board. I prefer using the the foam board that has reflectics either on one side or both sides. They're a little bit more rigid, more uh, uh, better insulating and, you know, all that good jazz. Obviously, it's more expensive. I'm bougie. I like that kind of stuff. The con to foam board is it's not as flexible as the 3M Thinsulate or the wool. What I would do if you were to use foam board is if you, if you would use foam board on the walls, because you're going to have those open like cavities, right? You can actually take the wool and stuff it into those cavities if you really wanted to or you could also uh you could also fill it with uh the crack sealer that they sell at like any you know home depot lowe's or any one of those places uh they're actually made for door frames and window frames it's for drafts they actually serve no insulation purpose whatsoever but you can use that to kind of fill in those gaps. It helps, sure, why not? I wouldn't spray your entire van with those is what I'm trying to say. What I would do if I was to use a moderate heater, which would be like an air top D2, and let's say I didn't even have an air conditioner, but uh, this was a semi on a budget. We're gonna go all the way back to the beginning. Frost King on floors and ceilings, kill mat on the walls, and then uh, floors and ceilings, I would use a one inch poly ISO board and a one inch poly ISO board on the ceilings, floors and ceilings, pretty much the same. Then I would use a wool on the walls in, in regards to the floor, I would actually have that as a floating floor. I wouldn't, you wouldn't have to bolt anything down. There would not be any holes in your floor whatsoever. Now that poly ISO board, if you have cut it before, you'll notice that it squeaks. So you might be saying to yourself, well, Jared, that rubbing up against the metal, you might hear a squeak and that's really annoying. After you've done your whole van build and all of a sudden you start to hear squeaking, well, there's two things you could do. Number one, I would actually use an adhesive to get, keep that down. But number two, you can actually use that crack filler, right? And you go around the entire edge of everything. That's it, not that hard. Or you could even take maybe some excess wool or 3M insulate and just stuff it in so it wouldn't rub up against the poly ISO to the metal to keep that from squeaking. Bada bing, bada boom, you're all set there. 
Okay, so after you do that, I would actually a uh, couple different things. Uh, if you were to do like a furring strip method, you could technically use like a wool or a thinsulate furring strips, and then even put like, let's say you use half inch furring strips, which I've seen people do, and I even did it, half inch furring strips, you could actually put half inch foam board in between the furring strips. So it would be like furring strip and wall all together. And it would make a massive wall pretty much. You don't really need to do that, but if you really want to up your R value, you could just absolutely just kill it, right? It'd be amazing. I guess what I would do there is you could just tape everything off with either string or tuck tape or something along those lines to keep everything up or from falling or adhesive of some sort, whether it's a like a like a construction adhesive or a spray adhesive until you get your wall paneling up. You're going to want to obviously keep all that insulation up. Well, I had the furring strips, so I just used the furring strips as a thing to keep them up. But I also used uh, construction adhesive on the ceilings and the, and, and the floor. So it worked out really well. What I've also seen people do, which has worked, but I haven't done it this way, is you could actually take a reflectic, which I really don't like. However, why they do it is different than what is actually intended for the use of it. So what they do is they'll take like a, a reflectic and they'll just have coat the whole wall with it. And they just use that reflectic as a barrier. That is it. And they'll use like a foil insulating tape. It's just like a foil tape. And they'll kind of just tape off all the seams. And that'll kind of keep all everything up. And, and, and that's really when it looks like a spaceship. It's kind of crazy. But doing that, that kind of just secures your wall in place, I guess. Why I don't like Reflectix is because if you actually read the directions on Reflectix, you're supposed to have a gap. You're supposed to have an air gap in there. <laughs> I would have the Kill Matter Frost King. I would have the poly iso on the floors and ceilings, and then I would have kill mat or, or frost king on the walls, and then I would have a wool or a thin solid on the walls, and then I would probably just cap it off with uh, foil tape or tuck tape or string just to hold it up until I put my finished wall up there. Now, I know I just kind of gave you guys a crash course in all of this, but if you do have any questions, you're more than welcome to comment below, and I try to get back to every comment that's uh, on there. I also set up consultations on my website, so you can go and check that out as well, jaredtachi.com. I want to try and keep the informational vlogs as quick and as painless as, as possible with kind of going over the steps that I would do, and that's how I would do it. Now, there might be 14 other ways to do it. However, these are the methods that I have found that has worked best in all of the vans that I have seen and that I have personally done. Go to my pinned comment and check out the other playlist below. If you want to have some fun, entertainment, travel, or comedy vlogs, that playlist is there as well as my builds that I have, my build playlist. And one of my most favorite, all the tours that I have been doing or that I've been doing the last three years uh, and many more to come. So check all those playlists below if you guys want to have some fun and everything is vlog style for everybody out there. And lastly, I would love for you guys to check out my other channel, which is the comedy channel and my podcast, Who's This Effing Guy? I will put a link below in as well in the description and the pinned comment. All right, guys, I'm out. See you later.